Hello, welcome to today's video. Today I'm going to be doing a miscarriage Q&A. Miscarriage is definitely not a subject that I want to become quite taboo on my channel. I want to be able to openly talk about it as you know, it's something I've experienced. It's quite normal for me to talk about it, so I feel like I want to share that with you. And if you're interested, or you need the support, or you want to hear about miscarriage, if you're curious, then you can watch this video. I'm not putting any names out there to whoever asked these questions. They're all going to be kept confidential. How did you find the reaction and support from friends and family? Mine was very mixed. Some people just didn't understand why I was so completely devastated first miscarriage we had three for the first one it was a bit of a shock that we were even pregnant uh, so when it came to the pregnancy announcements some of our family were a bit worried and concerned over the pregnancy when we announced it um, some most were excited but some were just had more of a concern because we had only been together for a short amount of time so it was a bit like whoa is everything you know gonna work out things like that but the reaction when we miscarried it was like everyone felt a bit you know sorry generally speaking everyone was just sad for us and um, they didn't know what to say some you know just didn't say anything and just carried on like nothing had happened which I felt a bit um, I wanted someone to say I'm sorry or I wanted someone to acknowledge what I'd lost or what me and Reese had lost so you know in a way I was a bit gutted by some reactions because I wanted the response, I needed that. I think for your family not understanding how devastating you are is because it's more of, it's a personal loss, They, it's personal to you and your partner because you've you've lived with that pregnancy, you've you've carried that pregnancy for however long and you've bonded and you've you've torn your mind around it um, and you've, you know, you've absorbed it in your mind and you've you know that's what's going to happen you're you've bonded with your baby so for family it's not so personal to them it's you know maybe they didn't even know you were pregnant so they haven't had time to you know bring their minds around to it and get excited and things like that so and maybe they haven't been through it. i i always say you people cannot understand how it feels unless they've experienced miscarriage themselves because they truly truly don't understand how it feels and everybody deals with miscarriage differently some people may think you know it will happen when it happens it's fine other people get really heartbroken and cut deep by it and myself I get cut deep by it because I, I get really emotionally attached to a pregnancy as soon as I find out I'm pregnant I that's my baby I expect it to be born I expect to be holding it a year later um, and things like that so for me it cuts me deep but for other people it might not and for family and friends they you know some family might find it incredibly emotional as well and they you know they want to be there for you other people think maybe you know shall I just let her get on with it or you know do I say anything maybe it's because they don't know what to say how far would you go to get answers for multiple losses after the second miscarriage that I had uh, I actually had to have surgery to remove the baby and they offered me um, some testing to be done on the baby uh, to see if there was any reason why the baby had passed away um, and they did a few tests and I can't really remember what they actually did but I know they did some testing on the baby and the tissue that came out when they did the operation um, and everything came back actually clear so there was actually no reason that they could find as to why the baby had passed away I was really thankful that even after the two miscarriages that they did some testing for me uh, because where we're from it's basically if you have a recurrent miscarriage of three then they go and then you can go under investigation you go for further tests to see if they can find any reasons um but i was happy after the second that they did a bit of testing on me and the baby to find out any reasons so i was thankful for that but i hope that one day if we were to go on to have more children which we do plan to do one day that i would get the same support and the same you know help if i had to go for any tests whatsoever i would do it just to make sure i would deliver a safe and healthy baby are you scared of future pregnancies because i am it almost puts me off trying for another uh a few months back if you were to ask me this question i would have said yes i even blogged about it about how scared i was um and how much fear it put inside me thinking about it about having to go through it again and again and again 
and a um, bit of background, we had two miscarriages, had Penelope and then had another miscarriage so for me when we had Penny I didn't expect the third miscarriage, I thought because I'd had Penny everything was fine, all the miscarriage drama was finished now and we were just going to live happily ever after. It didn't quite work out at that and we were shocked at a surprise pregnancy and then shocked about a miscarriage. It sort of shattered me a bit and then it put me in fear for when we do want to try for more children, you know, it's obviously gonna, we're going to have to fight this and it may happen again and again. But now I'm in a place right now where I feel quite strong, like I feel like prepared to do it, I feel like if I were to get pregnant I'd just, you know, I'd feel quite empowered, like I can do this and if I don't, I know where my head's at, I know how to help myself. I know that it's going to hurt and I know I'm going to be heartbroken but I know I can do this, I know I can be happy again because when you experience miscarriage you feel like you, you're just going to be up so heartbroken for the rest of your life and while you feel like that for a while you start to, you start to live again, you start to smile again, laugh again, live again and I know I can do that, I've done it twice, I did it twice already, I did it the third time and I had Penelope to keep me going and I feel like if I was to have future pregnancies that failed in miscarriage that I would be able to get through it. That's how I feel now. So for future pregnancies, yes I, I do get scared and it does upset me if I ever think about it but I'm in that place, like I say, where I feel quite strong so I feel like I, I'm prepared in myself for it to happen again and I know in a way not to get my hopes up too much and I just have to keep positive and hope for the best that the, that the next baby that we do have is going to be healthy. How did you deal with your miscarriages? What helped you come to terms with it? I think that was the hardest for me. The baby was gone and that was hard. When I had the miscarriages, I although I spoke to Reese and I cried on Reese, you know, day in day out, um, I felt like I had no real friends to talk to about it in, you know, in life around me and things and my family I would speak to about it but I just felt like they didn't understand well, you know my mum had a baby loss at 18 weeks a few years about eight years ago now and even her I just felt she didn't understand my experience how I felt you know everyone has their own feeling about things and while my mum had experienced it and I know a few other family members that have experienced it but it wasn't my experience and I felt like they just didn't understand and I was just on my own and I actually went to forums instead so I actually found a website called www.babyandbump.com Honestly, that was the best thing that I could have done for myself I've made long time friends from that I literally would write and write and write like a diary and get all my feelings out and I just put them out there for whoever to read if they understood, they understood, if they didn't then they that was fine but it was like no one was there to judge me I could write however I felt whatever I thought about whatever I was worried about I just got it all out in writing and I just published it and I felt like every time I pressed publish it was like a weight was lifted off my shoulders and it helped my heart heal that little bit more that for me was the best thing that helped me and I read other people's experiences and you know, I cried over other people's experiences and I just got all of my feelings out from the very bottom to the very top and I just let everything out. It's not just for miscarriage, it's for trying to conceive and things like that and if you're pregnant you've got updates and it also made me feel quite positive because I'd read people's experiences of them having miscarriage and then go on to be pregnant and having healthy babies and it was just really quite an encouragement source as well. So yeah, so I definitely recommend going to forums because they're really, really, really helpful. When you have a miscarriage, friends and family often want to show they are thinking of you, but struggle to find the words. What is the best way they can support you at this difficult time? I don't think it's so much the words that matter, because obviously in your time of grieving and things like that, sometimes words mean the world, but other times, you know, there just doesn't need to be any words because, you know, you and that person, you know what's happened, you know how you feel. Um, and sometimes just a hug is needed, if, if you haven't got the words, just maybe sometimes a hug or a gesture, it doesn't even need to be much, make them a tea, get them a bath, anything really. I don't think um, words are everything and sometimes it's just showing that person that you know, that you know how they feel 
um, you know what they're going through or you know that they're in a bad bad way, you know that they're sad, so just be there, be there for them in you know words or gestures or just think of them in some way, make it known to them that you're there. That's all I can say really for that one. Or buy them chocolate, I really appreciate it, chocolate. How did you cope with others being pregnant around you? This one I found the hardest, even up all the way up until I had Penny, through the first miscarriage, the second miscarriage, until the day I had her. I was so angry to everybody that was pregnant or was talking about pregnancy or someone that I'd see walking past that was pregnant. I was furious. Things that would bother me the most were mums that I would see out drinking, clubbing with their big pregnant bellies or they'd be smoking or you know just totally just doing something irresponsible and you know it would all be in front of me and I would just get so angry and hurt and I'd question you know why why them why why do they have a baby and you know I don't do any of that stuff I don't smoke I don't drink why don't I have my baby like and it used to just make me really really cross but you can't think like that like you can't think like that but you can't help but feel like that because you're grieving it's a I think it's part of it the anger the sadness the frustration it's all part of grief and it's you're gonna have those thoughts and you're gonna be angry at someone but you've got to distance yourself you've got to disconnect yourself from those people and concentrate on you and think positively about your future and your future baby um, but it does hurt, it does hurt seeing other people pregnant, it does hurt when other pregnant women are being irresponsible um, and it still does hurt me, it still bothers me in a way and I don't like to see it. When family members have their babies or you know, things like that it did bother me a bit and I distanced myself for a little while around it all. Um, I just maybe didn't visit much or I remember I had a miscarriage, I think it was my first one or my second and I went around to my cousins to see her baby and I was holding him and I just, I wasn't angry of at, you know, the sense that I was holding her baby. I was just hurting and I was just like thinking, oh, this is what I would have had and this is where, you know, where I'd be one day. But my baby had gone and I just feel quite hurt by it. It wasn't so much as angry. Um, so there was times where I felt sad and there was times where I'd feel anger. So it was between the two really. What do I say to someone who has had a miscarriage or a stillbirth? Um, as I said before, sometimes it's not all about words, sometimes you ha maybe could express a gesture or you know just make it known that you th you're thinking of that person, um, but there's a few things that I wouldn't say and things like um, things happen for a reason, and while that is sort of a positive thing, you know, maybe the baby had something wrong with them or things like that, straight after a miscarriage, that's not something you want to hear. If you was to say that to me now, I could understand. You know, it's been a year, over a year since my last miscarriage. And I can, I believe that in myself, I believe there was a reason that my babies were taken away. But at the time, if you would have said that to me, I would have got really upset and really hurt by that because... What reason would there be for someone to take my baby away? I still get emotional about that now, thinking about it when I say it out loud. But, um, yeah, when when you're fresh out of a miscarriage, that's not the best thing to say. As for stillbirths, you mentioned stillbirths. Um, I don't really want to comment on that because I haven't experienced a stillbirth myself. But I just couldn't imagine... I couldn't imagine it. I just I I got so hurt and heartbroken over miscarriages that I don't think I could even face thinking about stillbirth because it's just way 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 too deep for me. Um, but you know my heart goes out to everybody that's ever experienced a miscarriage, ever experienced stillbirth because it's literally the hardest thing any human being can go through. It's horrible for the men. It's horrible for the women. It's horrible for the family. You know it just hurts the whole of your surroundings. It's a really, 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 really hard thing to go through and, you know, if any anybody watches this video and they ever want to speak to me, then just message me. It doesn't have to be a comment on, you know, publicly. Just message me privately and I'll be more than happy to speak to you because 
that's what I feel like I need to do. I feel like I want to help people. I feel like I want to reach out for anyone that's ever experienced a miscarriage. Um, you know, and say it's okay. Like, I know. I know how you feel. And I know what you feel. And, you know, I'm here. So if you know anybody that wants any support, or if you yourself want support, then if you want to, come to me and I'll do my best to support you. If you have any other questions, then either message me or leave a comment below and I'll answer them again in another video. I will be doing a video about all of my miscarriages. I'll probably have to do a video per miscarriage, but I will be letting my story out there soon. So just bear with me. Um, it's quite an emotional thing to film and every time I go down to film I just go silent. Just bear with me, um, I am in the making of doing them, but it's just a hard thing to do, as you would know if you've experienced it. So don't forget to like this video, subscribe to our channel to keep up with future videos, and I'll see you again in my next one. Thanks guys, bye!